All these other people obviously aren't doing the countdown. Very good, very good. About 600. So how many of you really are looking forward to opening some gifts on Christmas? If you're being honest, you're really looking forward to opening some gifts on Christmas. Okay, how many of you are really excited to give a gift this Christmas? I think as the older we get, right, it kind of becomes, I like giving gifts. I like giving a gift when I know it's something they're going to like. Like, I like that more than getting a gift. Actually, I get really anxious when people give me a gift because I'm afraid I'm not going to like it and then I have to act like I do. <laughs> I'm serious. It stresses me out. I've only had like a couple of gifts in my lifetime that I've really been like, wow, this was an amazing, awesome gift because it was real thoughtful and they really put a lot of time and thought into it. Um, I, I was a teacher for a long time, so I got a lot of those teacher gifts. Woo! All kinds of candles and lotions and <laughs> candy. Yeah, that's what you guys got your teachers, isn't it? Did you make it for teacher anything? Do what? What was it? What was it? I don't remember your gift. You were out of the country. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so gifts are amazing. So I was, I was just when I was working on this, I came across this image, which I don't think it's gonna, it's not really representing the, the what I'm presenting. But I thought if Santa asked Jesus, how many of you, when you were a kid, you'd ask, you know, sit on Santa's lap? Anybody still believe in Santa Claus? Nope. Oh, Let's just get that. Okay. <laughs> Don't say anything. We're in the magic for Nikki. But um, what does Santa usually ask? What do you want for Christmas? What do you want for Christmas? So I just thought, what if Santa went to Jesus? Because you know it is kind of his birthday, kind of. And he asked Jesus, "What do you want for your birthday?" What do you think Jesus would say? This is a rhetorical question, and I want you to answer it. I want you to think about it. What do you think Jesus would say? Would he say, I want you to take care of the widows and feed the orphans? What do you think, what kind of gift could you possibly bring to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, who created all that there is and really owns everything there is? What possibly could we bring to Jesus? And we will come back to that in just a second. Um, but there were somebody in scripture that brought gifts to Jesus, right? Who were they? Wise men. We're going to talk about them. We are going to talk about the wise men. I like this little saying. It says, wise men still seek him. Wise men seek him still. Sorry, got it wrong. Um, but the wise men. So we're going to talk about the wise men. How many of you have seen a nativity at some point already this season? Awesome. Good. Um... And, and we do know that this is the reason why we celebrate. Now, just to get the religious stuff out of the way, this technically is not Jesus' birthday, right? Does anybody know when we think Jesus was probably born? In the end of September, towards that, that area. Yeah. If you didn't know that, I'm so sorry I crushed your heart. But that doesn't make it any less special. Because this is when generations and generations of Christians have decided to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Because was Jesus born? As a baby? Yep. Yes. So, we are celebrating his birth in six days, as Anderson pointed out. All right. If you could go to the scripture, we're going to read this really quick, and then I'm going to talk to you some about the wise men, probably tell you some things that you did not know. Does anybody want to read? Does anybody like to read? You want to read this off? Come up here. Are you a good reader? Is she a good reader, friends? They don't know. All right. We're about to find out. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, the Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard, the, that, <laughs> heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief, pri <laughs> people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, and the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of, of rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found him from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, 
They went on their way, and the star that they had seen when it rose went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw that the child was with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. She did a good job. Give her a hand. That was good. That was good Woo, saved me a lot of breath. Okay. So, question. How many wise men were there? Three. Really? Is that what the scripture said? Go back. Go back. Does it say three? Does it say three? Ah, it is a good point. It says magi, which we know is in the plural form, so there had to be at least two. But we really don't know how many wise men were there. The, <laughs> how many wise men there were. <laughs> um, the reason why they generally say three is because how many gifts were brought? Three. But the scripture never really says there were three wise men. We just know that there was more than one. Magi. All right. The Magi, I don't know if you guys, there's, there's different thoughts on what the Magi were. Some thought they were kings. We three kings of Orient are. That's where that song comes from. I, and my research, really feel like they were more like the councilmen to the king. They were the wise people. They were the educated people. Okay? Focus. I can see you. I'm watching you read. Okay. <laughs> um, but they were the wise people. They were the educated. They were the ones that were the scientists. They were the ones, um, in this case, had to be astrologers, right? They were not Jews. They were from the land of Persia, okay, which was ancient Babylon. This probably is all I like, don't even know. Do you, get, do you have the map? Can you go skip to the map? Okay. So this kind of gives you an idea. This is just, it's just a theory. We don't know for sure if this is the path they took. But they're over here, okay? Israel's over here, Bethlehem. They're over here, okay? So they somehow knew about the Jews and about the prophecies of the Jews. What's really cool is we have some biblical characters that were probably magi. Do you guys have any idea who they were that were in, they were exiled to the Babylonian area? Do you know, Hunter? Somebody that was a wise person, high up in the kingdom, that was a Jew? There's actually four of them. Starts with a D. No. Daniel. Daniel. Meshach. Shadrach. Abednego. This was the area that they were exiled to. And they were considered wise councilmen to the king, right? They were probably considered magi at that time. Do you understand what I'm, what I'm saying? Kind of getting the idea of who these wise men were. So, probably... They were very familiar with Jews. Jews had been exiled to their land. So they obviously from the scripture knew the prophecies, right? Because they talked to King Herod. They told him about what the scripture said. They weren't Jews. This is a pretty cool thing. I'm, I'm stressing. They were not Jews. They were like Gentiles, like us. Unless there's a Jew in here. Anybody Jewish? No? Okay. So we're all Gentiles. All right? So they were Gentiles just like us. And they had heard about the Jewish king. The, the, this Messiah that was supposed to be born. And so they were intrigued by it. I'm about to rock your world in just a second, I think. Because I don't think you guys know this next fact that I'm about to share. But anyways, how, how far of a distance do you think it is from there to there? 1,500 miles. How, how far do you think they traveled miles-wise? Whoa, 2,000? 100? They think it was about 800 miles. 800 miles. Josh, is that about how far camp is from us, roughly? You don't know? I think it is. I think it's about the same distance as those of you that went to Indiana camp. It's about that distance. Took us how long to drive there? 16 hours or so. Well, that was with a lot of eating and. But so think about walking that distance, okay? That's pretty intense. It's pretty intense, right? Okay. So as we can see from scripture, if you could turn back to scripture for me, James. No, that that one. The other ones. I'll get to that one in just a second. That's good. That's good. Stay right there. Um, and so they traveled. How long do you think they traveled? I'm hearing all kinds of... You guys are thinking, though. Thank you for giving answers. What we think is... You know how in the nativity we have baby Jesus, and we have the shepherds, and who do we have over here? 
We generally have the wise men, the wise men, right? With the baby Jesus, right? That probably isn't what happened. When did the star appear? When Jesus was born. Who was following the star? The wise men. So if they're all the way over here in Persia when the star appeared, they were pretty fast walkers <laughs> if they got there by the time Jesus was a baby. If you want to go to the next one, what we think, what historians think, from this scripture, it says when Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, because they went a different way, right? Herod was like, oh, when you find them, you know, when you find the child, come and tell me, because he wanted to kill him, right? Because Herod thought this king was going to overtake his rule. So he was very threatened by this. He didn't understand that Jesus wasn't coming to rule on earth, but in heaven. Anyways, so he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were what? Two years or younger. So they think it took them two years to get there because of the scripture. Because Herod, all he knew was that they had probably been traveling for two years. And so he didn't know exactly where the child was in that. But anybody that was two years and under, he killed. Now what, what happened was an angel appeared to Joseph, right, and told them to take Jesus to Egypt. And so that's how he, uh, Jesus was taken care of. But when the wise men actually came to Jesus, he was probably in his terrible twos. He was probably a toddler, not a baby. Some of you are looking at me like I just totally crashed your nativity. I am so sorry. But that is what a lot of historians believe um, is, is truly what happened. And what's so cool about this, okay, when we think about them traveling 800 miles, when we think about really all they were going off was a star, they had no idea what the terrain was between there and there, here and there. They really had no idea when they were going to get there. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? The, the amount of seeking that happened here. They were, they were truly seeking it. I don't know that I would have done it. I think I would have given up. I would have been like, hey guys, let's go back home. <laughs> I really think this is, you know, looking for a needle in a haystack here. You know, but they kept going and they kept following the star for a very long time. Two years is a long time time. If it really was two years, that's a long time to seek after. Something that you're not really even that familiar with. And so, what's really cool is they brought these gifts, right, to Jesus. He was a toddler. Two years old. Had he done anything yet? He hadn't done anything yet. Had he? Nothing. They had done, he, they definitely hadn't gotten anything from him, right? He hadn't done anything for them yet. And so, what was the gifts that they brought to him? He remembers. Gold. They're very symbolic, and it shows a lot of the wise men's faith and insight that was definitely God-given. And what's really cool is, see, Matthew was an original disciple. He's the one writing about this account. He's the only one to talk about the wise men. None of the other Gospels talk about the wise men, only Matthew. And Matthew's audience was the Jewish people. There was a lot of Jewish people by the time Matthew was writing his Gospel that did not believe in Jesus. And so I believe part of his reason for bringing in the wise men into his story was to show, look, Gentiles get it. Why can't you get it? <laughs> Gentiles get it. Jesus wasn't just for you. He was for the whole world. And so this is what these gifts represented. Gold represented kingship on earth. It was a, it was a present for, gold, for kings. So he brought gold. Mary was probably like, yes. Right? Cha-ching. No, I don't know. Who knows what Mary did with the gold? Um, frankincense was a symbol of deity. Okay? They were recognizing that he was not just some ordinary child. That he was God in the flesh. And then the myrrh was an embalming oil for death. So they were prophesying. Somehow they had insight on the fact that he would die for the world. Now whether that was just coincidence or not, I don't know. But it was prophecy into what he, his purpose was to be on the earth. Got it? All right, so go to the next slide. Oh, we already went over that, right? We're good. Okay, go to the next one. All right, so seeking God, like the wise men. So my question is, are we seeking God 
to the extent, the extent that the wise men did this Christmas. Jeremiah 29, 13 is one of my favorites. If you guys don't know the scripture, you should memorize it because it's fantastic. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Okay? Can you go to the next slide? I'll go back to this one. Look at this, the next one real quick. What does it mean to seek? Okay, I looked it up in the dictionary. I love looking words up in the dictionary. It says, these are all the different definitions, all right? To try to locate or discover, to search for. So like, I think of it this way. If I had a million dollars and I hid it over there in the fusion center, would you all be seeking that out? A million dollars? A million dollars? I would be beating you all down to get to a million dollars. I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> Money can buy a lot of things, though. <laughs> it can buy comfort. It can buy comfort. But if you were to be truly, truly honest, and you thought you had a chance for a million dollars, I guarantee you most of you in here would be looking for it. What would that look like? I mean, you'd be turning stuff over. You'd be looking at every nick and cranny. Seriously, a million dollars. If you knew what the million dollars was over there right now, Hunter, wouldn't you? You'd be going crazy. You'd be like, I'm going to find this million dollars. Seriously. That would be crazy. By the way, I did hide a million dollars. Anyways. But we would be seeking after it. And I really don't think we would stop until we found it because we would know we were that close to a million dollars, okay? So to try to locate or discover or search for, to obtain or reach, to move to, go to our, go to our tour. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> but to go tour, to inquire for, to request, to try. This is what seeking means. So when we talk about seeking God, do you get it? Do you get it? Now what's interesting, as I was thinking about this, if I said Jesus was physically in that room over there, how many of you would go in there? But how many of you would be a little scared to go in there? That's very, now, now I can speculate many, many reasons. I would say some of the reasons, if we're to be very honest, is we know we've got some stuff that we're not very happy about, maybe we're not very proud about something that we know probably Jesus isn't very happy about. And so the thought of actually seeing him face to face might scare us a little bit, right? We might be a little ashamed. And so that's, I mean, th that's, that's just being real, right? Like those of us that we know we've surrendered all and we've given it all to Jesus, we're going to be running in there. You would not be able to hold me back if Jesus was in there. I could care less about all of you. I would want to be in the presence of my Savior because I love him and I know what he's done for me. But there's some of you in here tonight that I know would hesitate to even go close to that door if Jesus was in there because you know there's things that are keeping you from seeking him this Christmas. You know there's things that he would not be very happy with. 